Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Coffee Shop Talk and Video Games. Today we're going to be talking about Star Trek, the Star Trek franchise, and Star Trek Online. Um, actually, not so much about Star Trek Online, other than maybe how much I like the game. For the most part, there's some things that uh, it's making me kind of lose interest. Uh, their constant push of their new ship series, the um, I can't actually remember off the top. I got one of them. In the in this video that I just bought and used, I don't like the look of it. It just looks too wonky, in my opinion. I know they're trying to go look of the Enterprise J, but I don't know, N not a fan. But anyway, I'm gonna actually before I get started, I'm gonna put a little disclaimer. I'm gonna mainly be talk about Star Trek's Discovery and a little bit of J.J. Abrams' Star Trek movies. I will say this: I am not a fan of Star Trek Discovery, so I promise you a lot of this is going to be anti-Star Trek Discovery. So if you don't want to hear that stuff, uh, this will be your time to move on to something else. Um, but I feel that a lot of people who are fans of the Star Trek franchise, as myself, feel a lot of the same way. I know, and I know there's a lot of videos on YouTube about the same subject. Um, so... I'm not going to probably get as in-depth. I will share articles and links and stuff so you guys aren't thinking I'm just making this stuff up. But uh, there's a lot of good videos out there about Star Trek Discovery and why a lot of Star Trek fans are upset with it. So anyway, when I get started, I'm going to go ahead and read my first article from Wired.com. And its title was, What's with all the hate for Star Trek Discovery? And I'm going to go ahead and read a part of the clip of that uh, that article I mean, I'm going to share several parts of this article um, but I want to start off the video with this because I believe it is one of it is not the only root problem with this with Star Trek Discovery but it is one of the root problems of Star Trek Discovery and I know a lot of people agree, oh, agree with what I think the main problem of Star Trek Discovery is but let's go ahead and get started with that one of the issues I have with Star Trek Discovery is it's perfectly explained out in this beginning two paragraphs of this article so i'm going to go ahead and start reading that <coughs> excuse me okay starts off with saying wired starts off with saying um star trek fans have been waiting over a decade for a new star trek tv show so many fans were excited when star trek discovery finally aired back in september i was one of those included fans um i was super excited when i heard there's going to be a new star trek series However, which I'm going to touch, touch base on this later in this video, I was not happy when I heard it's going to be on CBS All Access and it's going to cost money. Uh, see, my dog's getting wound up by something already. It's that cat again. That, and that bothers me. Star Trek has always been on CBS. It's always been free for people to watch. It's on a, it was basically available on any cable network. And the fact that CBS, and I heard this was a big push by Les Moonves, he was hoping to use Star Trek Discovery to promote CBS All Access to help bring in money, which, and sadly enough, it worked. I, myself included, shelled up money to watch this. I'm going to go ahead and start off and say this show was garbage. And so, again, that you don't want to hear a big hate speech about Star Trek Discovery, here's your time to move on. Or just mute the audio and watch the gameplay. But anyway, so I was pretty excited, minus the fact, like I said, it made me nervous when it was paid. I was also nervous when I saw the first concept design of Discovery. Um, I mean, as I read, there was apparently a book about a supposed captured Klingon, I think it was a D7 battlecruiser that was retrofitted into a Starfleet design, which I was like, you know what, that's kind of cool. It's kind of like uh, back in the Civil War, they captured, the, the South captured... Uh, I always mess up these names. I can't remember what the name of the northern ship was and retrofitted, retrofitted it or changed it over to one of the first ironclad ships, the um, Merrimack. And I thought that was really cool. Um, I was like, I, I, that can work. Especially the uh, when I found out this is supposed to be during the Klingon war between the Federations and obviously the Klingon Empire, which I was also pretty excited about. But anyway, to continue on the article... But since its launch, the show has seemed to have been met with an unusually high degree of hostility from viewers who have questioned everything from its uniforms to its ship's designs. Writer Sarah Lynn Michener, I'm probably butchering her name, but you guys can see it in the article, thinks, that th thinks those concerns are overblown. No, 
No, they are not. They are not overblown by any stretch of the imagination. For those who have followed Star Trek, I mean, obviously I was too young when the original series actually aired, but my dad shared a lot of the um, reruns with me, and I grew up with Star Trek original series all the way to, to Enterprise, and I liked Enterprise for the most part. It's a shame it ended when it did, because I think it finally found its groove when it ended, and I know there's a lot of people that feel the same way. And I love Star Trek. I like the Abrams. I will admit, I like the Abrams movies. They are not my favorite with uh, Beyond being my least favorite. I cannot stand Beyond. But that I don't think that's entirely his fault. I think that has to do with the guy that directed it since he had too much influence from Too Fast and Too Furious, in my opinion. But the concerns of the Star Trek fans for Discovery are not overblown. I mean, for crying out loud... You said it, it, it said it in the article itself, the ship designs, I mean, the Star Trek Discovery uniforms, I, the, the crew, if it was only on the crew, on the Discovery, I could probably understand a little better. Um, I mean, it's not, they don't bother me that much, because, I mean, Enterprise's uniforms were a little different, and it, it's kind of sort of a cross between Enterprise and the original series, I mean, uh, they, they, their uniforms didn't bother me too much. Now, what did bother me is the ship designs. And when I say ship designs, I'm meaning specifically the Klingons. The Klingon ship designs are absolute garbage. I mean, Enterprise even was closer to canon with the ship designs. And they're supposed to be a lot older than Discovery and the original series. For crying out loud, if they can get something that when you saw the ship, you're like, hey, that is a Klingon ship. When you watch Discovery, you're like... There is no way in hell that is a Klingon ship. That looks like our utter garbage. The only ship that looked vaguely Klingon was the Ship of the Dead. And even then, it just looked like a Y-Wing from Star Wars on steroids. And the concept of it was cool. The Ship of the Dead, it had the bodies of the fallen warriors on the hull, which is... <laughs> might be stretched but it sounded Klingon that's probably the most thing that sounded Klingon in this show yet other than the fact that Klingons love war and Kalos and the 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 uniforms of the Klingons are, are garbage too they look cheap they look plastic they look hokey it looks like something from just a horrible sci-fi series now, don't get me wrong, the special effects of Star Trek Discovery were amazing. I loved the special effects. The, I will admit, the lens fa flare was ridiculous. The lens flare gets annoying and distracts a lot from the movie, TV show in this case. And that seems to be the new popular thing for Star Trek that gets really old and annoying. But anyway, we're going to continue on and end up with the final part of the first excerpt of the article. Where they go on to say, and I'm assuming this is by the Sarah Lynn saying... When a show tries too hard to adhere to canon, it doesn't have much flexibility for creativity. Yeah, it, it was her missioner. She says in episode 285 of the Geek's Guide to, Galax to the Galaxy podcast, even the idea that some people are struggling or suggesting that they should build an entire ship based on outdated technology is just nuts. It's just crazy. Well, Sarah... Maybe you guys should have been more original and not did another prequel. I mean, in the, because of Enterprise is a prequel sequel. If you wanted flexible creativity, maybe you should have done something post-Picard, post-Voyager, post-DX9. You would have had a lot more room of creativity since Voyager opened up a whole new quadrant to the universe. And I mean, for crying out loud, Star Trek Online is a perfect example of that. You run into... Except they're getting really overkill with this whole, you know, time travel thing and dealing with the Tholians and uh, every expansion's got the Tholians now. Good for them. I mean, yeah, the Tholians are cool in concept. Uh, they're they're old. I want something new and different. But anyway, and that's the point I'm trying to make with Discovery. They wanted something new and different where they had more flexibility with their canon. And with creativity and still adhere to canon, they should have done something after those series. And if I'm wrong, let me know. If you guys disagree, you think it was cool that they did it. And I do admit, I do think it was cool that they went with the Klingon War and the Klingon Federation War. In fact, I would have loved a series like that. And honestly, the fan-made film 
Axanar, or I mean, the only clip they have that I can see right now is Prelude to Axanar, which unfortunately hey. shut down CBS and Paramount for copyright infringement issues, which I think is garbage. But you know, you know, forgive me for wanting good, actually something that looked promising and better than the garbage that CBS threw out there. That kept to canon more so than Discovery did, and that was done by a fan without the money that CBS... Speaking of which, from what I've heard, CBS actually didn't pay a dime for the first season. It was all Netflix, in which I, is why Netflix is pulling out of Discovery and it's not showing on their, on, out there for international audiences anymore, because they know they got burned. So that shows you that how much CBS truly cares. They did all, I mean, all they did was the work, and everybody else shelled out the money. And I, I hope that really bites them in the butt for that in the future. And they get shut down, so we don't have to put up with this filth anymore. But, um, or at least they learn their lessons and do a dramatic overhaul and say, like, oh, you guys were upset about season Don't worry about it. That didn't really happen. Here, Here's what we meant to do in the first place. But... <sighs> And they're complaining about the outdated technology. Again, if you didn't want to deal with the outdated technology, maybe you should have not done a prequel sequel. I'm going to keep calling it prequel sequel because, it, like I said, it was after Enterprise but before um, the original series. I mean, Enterprise did it, and their technology, see, I mean, there's some parts that's like, yeah, that looked a little stretched. It looks, but you got to think, we're in a new age with better technology and Gene Roddenberry was working with the technology at the time and what he believed would be advanced and now we've made leaps and bounds since then so it's kind of hard to make that plausible if we went to do exactly like uh, the original series did in Dis uh, Discovery or Enterprise for that matter but Enterprise still pulled it off it still looked believable I mean we've even made more leaps and bounds since Enterprise but they could have if they really wanted to put the thought and effort it just shows how lazy they were they could have pulled off the technology, technological advances in Discovery while still adhering to canon, but the, they were too lazy to put that much thought into it. They were more worried about what they can kick out as quickly as possible that can get them the most money in their crappy online service of CBS Online, uh, or All Access. I mean, good grief. Which is actually going to lead into my next point. And later on in the article, it says another point of contention is that the show is available exclusively through CVS All Access, a newly month, a new monthly streaming service. Many fans have vaulted at the prospect of having to sign up for yet another service just to watch Star Trek. But Sarah, I'm going to say Sarah because I can't pronounce her last name. It's probably pretty easy, but I'm, I'm not going to keep butchering, butchering, sorry, that was not intentional, butchering her name just because I disagree with her. Anyway, she says, she goes on to say, she welcomes the opportunity to support the show and watch it ad-free. People should be bending over backwards, bending over backwards to pay money for good science fiction. She says, because it deserves it and it's worth it. Okay, first problem. It said, let's see, blah, 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 ad-free. That's my first problem with the statement. She says ad-free. Actually, at, while I was waiting for my video to render so I can continue recording the narration, I checked. And order, the so starting subscription for CBS All Access has limited commercial interruptions. So there are still commercial interruptions. And it, it's been a while since I watched a show on CBS All Access. And let me tell you, it was not limited. I remember going, like, seriously, another interruption? I just barely started watching the show. And it would take forever for the commercials to end. It didn't help that the show felt like it was taking, the episode was taking forever to end. But to say that it's ad-free is garbage. You have to act, they actually have to pay more to be ad-free. So, and then she says, we need to be bending over backwards. Last time I checked. And by the way, that's a very anti-consumer statement right there. They Basically, they don't give a crap about what we want and what we look for. They just want the most money they can get out of our projects. And they're going to do everything they can to get there. And then the final thing that I said, that she says, and I, I'm going to lump this whole phrase in it. Good science fiction deserves it and it's worth it. That is not good science fiction. If you want to throw a Star Trek label on that show, it's not good science fiction. If you want to make it a generic Star, uh, science fiction show and not have it anything to do with Star Trek. All right. So I can see how sci-fi fans can support it to a point. But 
that it, it was definitely not worth it. I am very sad that I've given them as much money as I have up to this point. It's almost a year later, and I just now canceled my subscription, and that's my fault. That's a shame on me, in my opinion. Uh, CBS does not deserve my money for the garbage they produce. Now, the article goes on to continue to say that, uh, let's talk about the openly gay characters, uh, Hugh Colbert and Paul Stamets and um, Star Trek Discovery. Now, regardless of how you feel about homosexuals and if you think, whether you think that it's right or whatever uh, your religious or political stances on homosexuality are, is beside the point. Whether you like it or not, Gene Roddenberry is, all those Star Treks had social social in a way social justice agendas to it i mean even as far as back as the original series it, it was the first network television show to feature a female black woman as one of the main characters in the show and she had a very strong predominant role in it and he also was one of the first to have a interracial um kissing scene on star trek and i from what i understand i would say it wasn't live then it was a big deal they also, during like the issues with the Cold War and Soviets and all that, they had a Russian featured on the bridge crew and a Japanese navigator or um, helmsman. And they and so to say that Star Trek was never kind of edgy when it comes to social justices would be false and incorrect. And I, I, I agree that I don't understand why people are upset about the homosexuals being on Star Trek Discovery. Um, as long as it's tastefully done, and so far it seems to be tastefully done, I mean, it kind of helps that, uh, spoilers, by the way, for those who haven't seen it, um, Hugh Culver's dead. Um, they're probably going to try to bring him back. The, the show is full of so many plot twists and that it's, it's inconsistent and sad on so many levels. It's just, yeah. they, they try too many plot twists. They, you, they think they're throwing you through a loop, but it's like almost predictable at this point, even though there's meant to be surprises. But anyway. So I, I gotta agree. That's to be upset about that is just. I mean, again, I have my personal opinion and views on that stuff, but it, it, that's not what I'm here to do in this video. I'm just saying it's not surprising that it has happened, especially in this day and age. Now the uh, article goes on to say that somebody brought up a good point in the article that if you compare it to the first season there's other Star Trek shows it that Discovery is amazing compared to the others because some were kind of lacking with the exception of Star Trek Deep Space Nine I'm sorry the only thing amazing about Discovery is the visual effects and the potential the story had but that potential got destroyed very early on and there was no recovering from it and that that just yeah, that's an arrogant statement. It does not compare to the other Star Treks by any means. Whether if you want to do pilot episodes or full seasons, there's no way Discovery is anywhere on the same levels as the other Star Treks. I, I, Enterprise beats Discovery by leaps and bounds, in my opinion. But you know, I'm sure I'm gonna have people that counter that argument, which you're more than welcome to. I want to hear what you guys think and what you agree and disagree on. So, yeah, it's just, it's just sad. Now, one of the final points I will be touching on in this video, this will be at least a two to three part series, especially if there's a lot of people that like it, um, is the Klingons. I kind of brie mentally, briefly mentioned it in the beginning of this video and how their ships look like garbage and they, they, there's nothing that says Klingon about their ships. Well, honestly, there's nothing that says Klingon about the characters either. Uh, it's been, I know it's a dead horse that's been beaten over and over again. It's one of my biggest complaints and about the show. I can't, it, it actually angers me every time I see the Klingons appear on the screen. Um, I don't, a lot of people complain about how the Klingons are spending a lot of time speaking in Klingon, which with the one exception, I don't mind. I mean, Gene Roddenberry put a lot of thought into the Klingon language and I think it's kind of cool that it's kind of considered an official language. Um, and I know in previous Star Treks, they kind of just made certain comments and statements in Klingon with the, and then the rest of the show is them speaking in English, which hey, I, I'm I, the people that are upset. They speak majority in Klingon. I, I'm not, I'm not going to defend them or, um, be against them either because I mean, it's, they do have their points and to call them like 
xenophobic or whatever they're calling these social justice warriors they're calling people against this these days is it it's just wrong it's just people are saying and the, the one of the main reasons why they're against the klingon speaking so much klingon is because the garbage the art department or um makeup department put into these characters the prosthetics are so hokey i thought i was watching a cheap sci-fi show i mean their faces barely move, showing expressions. They barely can be understood because they sound like they're sucking saliva out of their mouths from the fake teeth they have in there more than they are trying to enunciate and pronounce their words. It, and so to hear, I mean, the, the Klingon language is not a lovely language to listen to by any stretch of the imagination, which is another complaint people have about hearing nothing but Klingon when, they, when they're on the screen. But to add the prosthetics, is, it just makes it so much worse. It's unbearable to listen to. And I, I think one of the reasons why they did it is because they're hoping you'd be too busy reading the subtitles to care what the Klingons look at look like so you can't study them and see how horrible they look. But unfortunately, it backfired because a lot of us did study how the Klingons look, and we're not happy. They're just horrible. And the, there's no... The only thing about the Klingons they got right is, I mean, though they're garbage, the ridges and the teeth. But even then, they butchered that somehow. I mean, I could go probably a whole video complaining about all my issues with the Klingons. They're just... Uh, I saw one guy make a comment. They look more like J.R. Tolkien's Urukai from Lord of the Rings than they do Klingons. Just in, like, space get-up. I mean, to a point, that's actually what the first thing I thought. It's like, these guys look like Urukai. In fact, when my dad saw... I don't know if it was leaked or whatever. His first image of what the aliens were going to be in Discovery, he thought they were, like, some Jemadar mixed race. He didn't think that... They were Klingon, and when he found out they were Klingon, he was sorely disappointed. And he grew up with the original series, so that's just—it's hard. He's—I it, mean, it's not like he's a die-hard fan that his life is now over because somebody butchered Discovery. But it, in a way, it did kind of break his heart because it's—they didn't. The writers and producers didn't seem to care what the fans actually want, and. And, and another video I'm going to touch base on this. And I have, I used to have a lot of respect for J, um, Jason Isaacs. I love him as an actor. But seeing some of the things he said about the fans and some of the comments he made about Discovery just makes me sick and sad. But we'll cover that in the next video. We'll be more about the characters like Michael Burnham and Jason, or, and, um, Jason Isaacs' character, uh, Lorca, um, Giorgio and we'll cover more of that in the next series and um what i think and don't think uh, they, i do have my issues with them i mean they they had potential some of them a lot of them had potential but end up getting ruined as the series went on but anyway guys that is actually going to include part one i will be working on part two sometime next week and pick up where we left off if you guys enjoy let me know in the comments below like or dislike um and if you want more also let me know if you agree or disagree with what i anything i had to say i would love to hear it um like i said i know this topic has been overdone on youtube and all over the internet but you know i wanted to add my little twist to it so i mean it's not really a twist like i did repeat a lot of things that were said but and add some of my gameplay footage star trek online is not the most entertaining game to watch to play so i just figured to add something to add some substance to it now don't worry a future if i continue the star trek online coffee ta uh, coffee shop talk and video game series it's not going to always be hate speech about where the future of star trek is going it's going to be talking about some fond memories of star trek and some things i loved about star trek so yeah don't worry guys i mean uh I don't want to get too caught up with the politics and social justice issues of everything. I mean, they will be covered in different videos and stuff when they arise, but I do want these videos to be somewhat positive and more... I, I know when I watch videos like this, I get fired up and it makes me angry and I, I don't want to do that all the time in the videos. So, But anyway, um, if you do like this video, like I said, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you agree on and disagree on. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And the next, there will be a part two. Hopefully I can leave it to just two parts. So anyway, guys, have a good one. Thanks for coming along. And I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to try a dragon bitch. No, I... Corrosion. Oh crap, gotta go. Nope, too late.
Ah! Stupid stalkers. Are all my guys down? Come on, Jimadar. Make me proud. Mm, he did it. 